The Bible says King David was perfect. King David committed adultery and murdered a man. But God still said he was perfect. Bring it up. Right. Oh, God. No. What? Yes. Oh, wait, come here. Come here. Come here. Sit. 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 Hold on. I'll be back this week. I'll be back. This week. I got it. My brother, you know why his heart was perfect? Because he repented. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. See, that's what God said about us. We are children that will not. Here the law door. When the law start coming out, everybody got something to do. Everybody got to run. You don't keep the commandments. Hey. No, no. You're wrong. I didn't say I keep the commandments. You said, you said. I, I know God. Right. It's wrong. Okay. okay, that doesn't mean I'm not going to fall or stumble or right. slip or shrimp because I'm flesh. Right. We're all flesh. Yeah. But watch this, sis. It's not that we're not telling you to be flawless. But, but you can be, you're supposed to be perfect. Keep the commandments. Hey. No, no, you're wrong. I didn't say I keep the commandments. You said, you said. I, I know God. It's wrong. Okay. okay, that doesn't mean I'm not going to fall or stumble or right. slip or shrimp because I'm flesh. Right. We're all flesh. Yeah. But watch this, sis. It's not that we're not telling you to be flawless, but, but you can be, you're supposed to be perfect. Mm. I, I can't what, be perfect. Watch this. You believe in the Bible? I believe in the word of God. You believe in all praise. You believe in the Bible? Okay, so watch this. Give me that. Give me. Huh? Believe it's written. Say again. Believe it's written. You believe it's written. Okay, so watch this. Read that. First Kings chapter 8, verse 61. Just listen to this. Listen to this. Let your heart therefore be perfect. Wait a minute. What was the commandment that God gave to King Solomon? Read it again. Let your heart Therefore be perfect uh -huh. with the Lord our God. Let your heart be perfect with the Lord our God, read. To walk in his statutes. But how is how is your heart perfect with God? To walk in his statutes. To walk in his statutes, read. And to keep his commandments. See, sis, that's how we're perfect. That doesn't mean you're not gonna make mistakes. Perfect, listen, listen good. Perfect and flawless are two different things. Right. Because we're going off of the Webster's Dictionary version of perfect. No, the Bible Dictionary of perfect is different. The Bible, the Bible says King David was perfect. King David committed adultery and murdered a man, but God still said he was perfect. Bring it up. No. Why? Oh, wait. Come here. Come here. Come here. Sister. Sister. Hold on. I'll be back. I'll be back. My brother, you know why his heart was perfect? Because he repented. Right. He right. repented. He right. acknowledged when he said it was wrong. He said, I'm not going to do that no more. That's how you're perfect. That's how you're perfect. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 8. She's been on a spiritual journey. On a spiritual journey? Yes, sir. Oh, no, no, sis. no, sis, sis, sis. We here to build. Come on. We building. Come on. Guess what, sis? Sis. We all on a spiritual journey. Listen to this. My brother, come over here. Hey, bro, bro. Before you leave, listen to this. Isaiah. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna show you an example of what we just saw and what we've been seeing all day. Read this real quick. God wrote about his people, the children of Israel, in the Bible. He wrote their character. Now read it. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 9. That this is every verse, verse 8. Now go! Write it before them in a table. So God told Isaiah, he said, go write it before them in a table, meaning a book. Read. And note it in a book. Uh-huh. That it may be for the time to come forever and ever. So that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. Meaning, he told him to wrote it, write it in BC time so that in 2024 we can go back and read it and see what? That this is a rebellious people. God said that this is a rebellious people. This is what we deal with. God's people, you, 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 him. You guys are the 12 tribes of Israel. You are the real true. That's right. Not those, those people walking around with the black suits and the curls. They are not the Jews, they're European. Jerusalem is in Africa, they're not Jews. They've never been Jews. They wish they were Jews, that's why they call themselves Jewish. Right. Read. Lying children. Wait, what did God say about his people? Lying. Children! He said they're lying children. We just had a sister before us saying that, oh, God is in me. Jesus is in me. If Jesus is in you, then you're gonna do the things that he says. Right. I'm not saying you don't you don't want to follow Christ. I'm just saying you're not doing it right now. Because guess what? For 30 years I thought that I was following Christ. I was going to church on Sunday, but then I'm 
start reading the Bible like, wait a minute, Christ said not to do this. The church said it's okay to do that. For instance, the Bible says women are not even supposed to wear pants. Right. Did you you ever heard that before? Yeah. Right, but the churches don't say that you have to wear you have to wear a dress, right? Why? You know why? Right. As long as you pay them, they'll tell you whatever you want to hear. Right. For instance, you you've been to church before, right? After church, outside of the church, you ever see people like smoking cigarettes? But what is? Are you supposed to be smoking cigarettes? Should you be killing yourself if you believe in Christ? You think Christ was the, the disciples that was walking with Christ? Peter, John, James, you think these men were walking around smoking cigarettes? No. Read. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. See, that's what God said about us. We are children that will not hear the law of the Lord. When the law starts coming out, everybody got something to do. Everybody right. got to run. That's Today is the Sabbath day. The church don't even teach that. The, the, the Bible says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Right. Six days shalt thou labor, but the seventh day is a holy convocation. That's it's the Sabbath of the Lord. What is the seventh day of the week? Saturday. Sabado. Right. Right. Sabbath day. Today is the Sabbath day. We're not supposed to be working. We're not supposed to be buying. We're not right. supposed to be selling. We are the Jew. Why are the Jewish people not working today? Why are they not shopping today? Because they know that it is the Sabbath day. And they're pretending to be us. And that's our culture, that's our history. And we're walking around here like fools, shopping and buying things on a Saturday. Why? Because we didn't know that. The church is not teaching us that, sis. The church is not teaching you. Now they're putting you in sin. That's why we're out here to teach you now. Right. Next Saturday, you're like, no, I'm not doing that. Right. I know that it's a Sabbath day. That's what the Bible says. It's always been in there, it never changed. Keep reading, watch this. Which said to the seers. Now, this is what our people say. The seers are the prophets, those that see. Read. See not. Don't tell me what I'm doing wrong. Like a lot of our people, I just told you, sis, by you buying today, you're in sin. Do you think I hate you? Why do you think I told you that? So that I can do better next time. So you can repent and get the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> That's love. That's how I show you love. I told you, you're not supposed to be in your pants. If I was a whoremonger like some of these other, brothers, younger, uh, some of these other brothers out in the street, I'd just say, whatever, because I want to see you behind. I don't want to see you behind. That's for your husband. That's for your husband. You're a princess. You're a daughter of Israel. You're, supposed to, you're royalty. You're supposed to conduct yourself that way. That's why I'm telling you, as a brother, I'm telling my sister that. Read. And to the prophets. Prophets are not unto us right things. And they say to the prophets, the prophets are the men that's out here telling you what's to come, telling you what's going on right now. Oh, don't prophesy unto us right things. Don't tell me what the Bible says. Don't tell me that destruction is coming to this place. Don't tell me that it's going to get worse before it gets better. I don't want to hear that. Tell me that this, this is a year of prosperity for me. Tell me that you see great things in the future for me. That's not what the Bible says. Read. Speak unto us. Smooth things. See, that's what they want to hear, smooth things. When you go to church, what does a pastor tell you? Smooth things to make you feel good. I'm not out here to make you feel good. I'm out here for you to get the kingdom. Right. You have to fear God. If you don't feel good fearing God, then I can't help you. That's what this whole Bible is about. That's what this walk is about. Fear the Lord. That's right. Learn to fear the Lord. Our people do not fear God. We only fear the white man. That's it. When the police roll up, everybody's scared. Right. But now when it comes to keeping God's laws, there's no fear. Somebody would tell me they, they believe in God while smoking a cigarette, while smoking weed, while selling drugs. Sisters running around sleeping with this one, that one. Oh, I, I believe in Jesus. Right. Sis, you haven't learned fear yet. The young man being gang oh, I, with, a, with a Jesus piece around his neck. Bro, you don't fear God. As a people, we do not fear God. God is a, you know they call him the great and terrible God. The El Shaddai, the great demon-like terror. Look at what he did in Egypt. Is that a God of love and hugs? When he came out into the wilderness with Moses and those people were being rebellious and he had the earth open up and swallow thousands of people. Is that a, a God of, of, of love? The blood. Of, of, the blood with right. Noah. Do we not read the Bible? This is a God to be feared. Right. This is a God to be, if you want to make the kingdom. Keep finish that. Prophesy deceit. That's what our people want to hear. Prophesy deceit. If I was sitting here telling you that prosperity is coming and we're going to be all right, kumbaya, everybody would be here listening. Like, oh, yeah, that sounds great. Let me pray for you, brother. 
not telling you, listen, you're in this situation because of the things that you're doing, we need to stop. Right. Our community is like that because of how we live. Right. Right. It's because of how we live. We're doing it. Bring it We're out. the ones doing it. This happened to us because of how we live. That's it's right. prophesied in the Bible. Right. The Bible said that the real Jews would go into slavery on ships. Right. Those people that you see in Brooklyn, those Caucasians with the black suits, never went into slavery. Right. Right. And we don't care. Because it's just a normal Saturday. It's just a normal Saturday and then tomorrow's Sunday. Let me go to church and let the pastor tell me whatever. How come the pastor didn't tell you that slavery was in the Bible? Right, right. bring it up. If he knows the Bible, why did he tell you? That's a pivotal chapter. Right. Any Bible scholar will tell you that Deuteronomy is a pivotal book in the Bible. That's, That's right. when Moses prophesied what would happen in the future to the children of Israel. Yes. No Jewish person is going to open up the book of Deuteronomy and they have it in their Torah. Right. They will never, as a to us, they will never open that book. Because they open that book, they condemn themselves. That's right. Watch this. Hold that. Give me, give me Songs of Solomon, chapter one, verse five. Bring it out. Because the, those Jewish people, they'll name their kids Solomon, Shlomo, and all those things, right? But let me see what the Bible says. And it says always. This is not a, a, a new Bible. This is the same Bible that your grandmother had. Read this. Songs of Solomon, chapter one, verse five. Let's see what King Solomon said out of his own mouth. Bring it out. Son of Solomon chapter 1 verse 5. I am black. Wait, what did Solomon say? I am black. One more time. I am black. Let me see that. Hey. You made it up. You made it up. What did King Solomon say right there? Go ahead. What did King Solomon say right there? Always been in the Bible. Always been in the Bible. That's right. We didn't write it this morning. It's always been in the Bible. So how are they Jews if King Solomon was a Jew and he said, I'm black? He said, I am black. Right. Give me Jeremiah. Jeremiah 14. Let's get some more. I'm, I'm showing you since somebody's been lying for a long time. And guess what? Look around. Somebody's been buying it for a long time. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 14. The verse 2. Uh -huh. Judah mourneth and the gates are of language. So he said the tribe of Judah, the Israelites, are in mourning and the gates have language. Meaning their leadership has fallen. Read. They are black unto the ground. They are what? They are black unto the ground. They are black unto the ground. Think about it. If we go to Revelation, the revealing of Jesus Christ, when his friend John the Revelator saw him, what did it say that he looked like? You remember what it said? Revelation 1 14. Go ahead, you good. What do you say? Um, like his hair is that of grass or something like that. His hair? Yeah, his hair is like that. Watch, let's get it. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hair. His head and his hair. The hair on his face, the hair on his head. We're white like wool. We're white in color and woolly in texture. What does that mean? That his hair was like wool. Say that again? Like my hair. Like your hair, like your hair. It said the hair on his head was like the pure wool. Who else has woolly hair other than us? Read. As white as snow. His hair was fully white. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes were red. Read. And his feet. His feet. Like the divine bronze. You got to reverse that all the time. You said that this is okay. a race. He's like, this is for sure. All right, my young girl, I'm gonna show you something. Read this, read this down. So watch this. So, and remember I said, we've been lied to for a long time and somebody's been buying it. Because when I ask the older black people out here, what color is Jesus Christ, what are they gonna tell me? Because a lot of them will say, oh, he's black, oh, he's black. But guess what? Now I'm gonna ask the child, the children that they're raising. My brother, young man right here, who is this? Whatever life gives us. Yeah. Who is this? He's like, I don't know now. I know you said it before. I'm sorry, I put you on the spot. It's okay. Huh? You always mess He said Christ. You see that? We deal with that all the time. The adults say, oh, no, I know that Jesus is black. So how come your kids don't know that? Because you don't really believe it. Right. You don't really believe it. That's why your kids don't know. You're just saying it because you think I want to hear that. Right. He just said, this is Jesus. This is not Jesus Christ. This is, and see, and he said, that's Satan. But that's what we learn in church. This man right here is this man. His name is Caesar Borgia. He's the son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. 
His father, the Pope, commissioned Leonardo da Vinci to paint his son as Jesus Christ during the Renaissance. That's world history. They had a, 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 a series about it on what, Showtime? Or one of them called the Borgias. A corrupt family. And he commissioned Leonardo da Vinci to paint his son as Jesus Christ. That's world history. Everybody knows that. Except Everybody knows people. that this is not Jesus. That's Caesar Borgia. Except black people. Except for black people. If you go to Europe, they all know that. We go to Europe and we say, oh, did you know Jesus is black? Even white people are like, yeah, we know that already. Black people don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, people of Russia, today we stand on the precipice of a monumental revolution, a moment that redefines not only our understanding of history, but also the path forward for our great nation. In an extraordinary discovery hidden beneath centuries of lore and legend, we have opened what can only be described as the oldest vault known to mankind. What we found within its ancient confines challenges the very fabric of our beliefs and heralds a new dawn for our country. Within this vault, we discovered figures of bi biblical proportion, characters that many have read about, debated and revered. These figures, preserved against the sands of time, reveal a truth that is as profound as it is transformative. They are all black. This revelation, this undeniable truth, stands before us not as a contradiction to our faith, but as a testament to the diversity and unity that faith embodies. As your president, I see this moment not as a challenge to our beliefs, but as an opportunity to embrace a wider, more inclusive understanding of our history and spirituality. Russia, in its rich tapestry of cultures, traditions and people, is uniquely positioned to lead the world into this new era of understanding and acceptance. From this day forward, let us proclaim our nation under the guidance of black Jesus, a figure who represents not just the cornerstone of Christian faith, but also a symbol of the universal values of love, compassion and brotherhood. This black Jesus, whose likeness and history have been unveiled from the oldest vault, is a message to us all that divinity knows no color, that spiritual truth transcends race, and that our common humanity binds us more tightly than our differences divide us. Let this discovery remind us that history is not just the story of those who wield power, but also of those whose contributions have been overlooked or forgotten. It challenges us to re-examine what we know, to question our assumptions, and to open our hearts to the broader possibilities of understanding and faith. As we embark on this journey of discovery and understanding, let us do so with open minds and compassionate hearts. Let us build a nation that truly reflects the teachings of Black Jesus.